In this video, we'll be talking about unsymmetric bending. So what is unsymmetric bending? Simply put, unsymmetric bending is when a structural element is subjected to bending about more than one principal axis. It's also commonly referred to as biaxial bending. Now let's illustrate what unsymmetric bending is with the diagram below. If you observe the rectangular shaft, notice how there's a distributed load WZ acting along the length of the shaft in the Z direction. There's also a vertical load P at the open end acting along the Y direction. Now, if you take a cross section of the rectangular shaft and apply the corresponding principal axes, we'll end up with the following cross section. The distributed force WZ will produce MY and the vertical load P will produce MZ. Now, if you want to obtain the resultant moment MR, we'll have to apply the Pythagoras theorem, where we'd have to take the square root of my squared plus mz squared, and this resultant moment will be located at an angle theta from the positive z axis, where theta is equal to the inverse tan of my over mz. It's also important to note that theta is measured from the positive z axis towards the positive y axis. On the following slide, we'll see how these bending moments mz and my can be used to determine the stress distribution. Alright, so if the bending moment acting about the principal axes are known, we could then utilize the bending stress formula to solve for the stress distribution for each moment separately. We could then superimpose the results to get the final answer. I'll be using the cross section from the previous slide to show you what I mean. As I just stated, we only need the moments acting about the principal axes and so we'll only need the z and y component of MR. Since we'll be solving for the stress distribution individually, I'll draw a cross-section for each component. Here's the cross-section for MZ and MY. Keep in mind, the sum of each component will provide the stress distribution of the overall cross-section. On the following slide, we'll be looking at the stress distribution for each cross-section individually. We'll start off by observing the stress distribution produced by MZ. We'll be using the right hand rule to figure out this distribution. Before I go into more detail, keep this in mind. A tensile stress is considered positive and a compressive stress is considered negative. Alright, so if you point our right thumb towards the direction of the moment, which in this case is in the right direction, notice how your fingers curl from top to bottom. This is an indication that the top half is in tension and the bottom half is in compression. This can be verified with the altered bending stress formula. We'll denote the bending stress produced by mz as sigma x. The equation for sigma x is as follows, where sigma x equals mz multiplied by y divided by iz, and this whole equation is multiplied by negative 1. I'll go into more detail regarding each variable later in the video. Now I'll explain why we have to multiply the equation by negative 1 with this arbitrary point here. We'll call it point A. Based on the stress distribution and the coordinate system, the bending stress at A should be positive, but MZ is negative. This is because the moment is in the negative Z direction. Meanwhile, Y is considered positive based on the current coordinate system in place where y is positive while going upwards along the positive y-axis. Keep in mind, the i value is always positive, and so it has no effect on the side convention. So we really only care about the sign for mz and y. Now, if you multiply the signs for mz and y, we'll end up with a negative value. However, the value should be positive because point A is under tension. And so this is where the negative 1 comes into play the negative sign will correct the sign convention by making it positive. On the following slide, we'll follow a similar process to figure out the stress distribution and the corresponding equation for MY. On this slide, we'll observe the stress distribution produced by MY. Just as before, we'll use the right-hand rule to figure out this distribution. So if you point our thumb towards the direction of the moment, which in this case is upwards in the positive Y direction, Notice how your fingers curl from left to right. In this case, the left half is in tension and the right half is in compression. We'll verify this with the bending stress formula. 
will denote the bending stress produced by my as sigma x for the my component. So the equation is as follows. Sigma x equals my multiplied by z divided by iy. I'll go into more detail regarding each variable later in the video. You might be wondering why we don't have to multiply the equation by negative 1. I'll show you with this arbitrary point right here. We'll call it point A. In this case, my is positive because it's pointing upwards along the positive y-axis. The z value for A is also positive because it's in the positive region of the cross-section. Based on the coordinate system, z is positive while moving towards the left along the positive z-axis. Now, if we multiply my and z together, notice how the value is positive. And this makes sense because point A is in tension, and so we won't be needing the negative one. It's important to note that the sign convention heavily relies on the coordinate system in place. Now, on the following slide, we'll develop the general equation for the total bending stress. As I mentioned on slide 3, we could superimpose the bending stress for each cross-section to obtain the total bending stress. In other words, we could sum the bending stress formula for mz and my to determine the total bending stress acting on the cross-section. As a result, we'll end up with the following equation. On the following slide, I'll explain what the variables represent. Alright, so it's finally time I explain what the variables represent. So sigma x represents the normal stress at the point of interest in the x direction due to bending. My and mz represents the bending moments applied about the principal y and z axes, respectively. y and z represents the coordinates of sigma x based on the yz coordinate system on the cross section. Iy represents the minimum principal moment of inertia computed about the y axis of the cross section. And Iz represents the maximum principal moment of inertia computed about the z axis of the cross section. On the following slide, I'll go into more detail regarding the axes. Alright, so there are generally two principal axes. The first one is oriented along the axis of symmetry and the second one is oriented perpendicular to the axis of symmetry. For our purposes, the section will either be singly symmetric or doubly symmetric, so it would be pretty easy to figure out where the axes are located. But how would we label the axes? Based on what I mentioned on the previous slide, the z-axis provides a larger moment of inertia. In other words, iz is greater than iy. And so we could solve for the corresponding i value and orientate the axes accordingly. For the purposes of this course, we won't be dealing with cross sections that have no axis of symmetry. This is because the procedures required to orientate the principal axes are beyond this course. On this slide, I'll begin talking about the neutral axis. As you may already know, the neutral axis runs through the geometric center of the cross section at a location where the normal stress is equal to zero. But the issue is, we don't really know its orientation. In order to figure out the orientation, we'll need to know what alpha is, where alpha represents the angle between the neutral axis and the positive z-axis. Before I go over the equation for alpha, let's take a look at the diagram below. Alright, so the stress distribution of figure D has been broken down into figure E and F where the moment mz in figure E is pointing towards the left, and the moment my in figure F is pointing upwards. For this example, the neutral axis is oriented at an angle of alpha from the positive z-axis. On the following slide, we'll be using this example to determine the equation for alpha. On this slide, we'll develop the equation used to determine the orientation of the neutral axis. Alright, so here's the superimposed cross-section of the diagram from the previous slide. Since the normal stress is zero at the neutral axis, we can take the bending stress formula we developed and equate to zero. Now let's rearrange the equation and isolate for y over z. Now let's simplify the equation even further. If you recall, the angle between the positive z-axis and the resultant moment mr is theta, and so we can substitute my and mz with mr sine theta and mr cos theta respectively. Once we cancel out mr, we could simplify sine theta over cos theta with tan theta. 
The ratio y over z actually represents the orientation of the neutral axis. And so y over z can also be defined as tan alpha. Now, if we sub tan alpha into the equation, we'll end up with the following equation. While applying this equation, there are a few things you should keep in mind. iz cannot equal iy since iz is greater than iy. And alpha cannot equal theta because the orientation of the resultant moment is not the same as the orientation of Na. Now this concludes the video for unsymmetric bending. In this video, we developed the equation used to solve unsymmetric bending problems. And we also talked about the orientation of the neutral axis.